Yo, yo, Kevin Kenny, live in New York City, the Build Series, standing to my side, or sitting to my side, I should say, in some sweet Travis Scott Nikes you're about to see. Uh, her new album is out right now, How to Be Human. Please give it up for Chelsea Cutler. I thought we had like a boy band on the show today when I was walking to work because there's a huge crowd outside and you all actually packed our studio, Chelsea. So oh, welcome. Man, love that. You got like diehard fans. I mean, like, do you really like, I mean, I'm sure you appreciate that, but what's that feel like when the, it's I not mean, just the casual music fan. It's like you really like they connect with you. It feels like. I think honestly, that's just kind of been like our mantra for, for building the fan base just because at the end of the, the day, having diehard fans like that, that's who moves tickets and, and, you know, seats and butts at the end of the day. And that's how you build a community, yeah, which I, I have to imagine is probably the most fun out of anything that you really do when you boil it down, right? Yeah. 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 And I think also the industry right now, just the culture of it is very difficult kind of to sell yourself as an artist in, instead of just selling a single um, or like one big song. Um, so I think, I think having the ability to really connect and like build that fan base is, is unique and something that we work at for sure. Which is kind of remarkable. You touch on there with your journey. I, I thought I was an OG fan, um, but I'm sure there's even older fans here, but I found out about you through your shirt in like 2017. I mean, when did that song come out? Yeah, I think it was March 2017, right? Right. Yeah. And like, like that was kind of a breakthrough moment, but you haven't had some like viral sensation overnight song. It's really been steady, uh, just growth throughout, which yeah, is kind of definitely. rare. I think I mean I think it's a more healthy type of growth at least for me cuz I don't know I don't know I don't know how people adjust to such drastic like spikes in success you know Oh yeah. I mean? Um yeah. do you do you feel pressure at all to chase trends cuz you don't? No. And you're your own you make your own sound you carve out your own lane but do you, you don't feel pressure at all? No. Where do you think that comes from that confidence to just not like give in? I mean I don't want to make music for for having a hit. I don't want to make music for like being super successful. Obviously I'm competitive and I, I want to be successful in my industry, but I want to do so making the music that I like. And, and at the end of the day, writing's kind of a selfish thing, right? Cause as an artist, it's our outlet. So it's my mode of creativity. And, and at the end of the day, I kind of just write songs because it's what I'm passionate about. Yeah, and it's it's one of your greatest strengths as an artist. And I was thinking about this, where you sort of, I mean, you do such a remarkable job of of these raw and honest lyrics that really speak to what I have to imagine it's like to be a 22 year old woman in, in 2020. And now, though, over the last year or so, like your life has just completely changed, and I'm sure you're having a very um, unique experience that maybe not everyone does have. How has that impacted the the songwriting? I think I don't know. I don't. I don't even know. Like the ways that my life is super different than my friends. Because You're not in school anymore. You don't take tests I mean, my anymore. class graduated. So, like, I felt I felt super weird, like, watching all my teammates go back to preseason and watching right. all my friends go back to college. And they, everyone got to go abroad, and I didn't get to do that. But for the most part, all my friends are, you know, they've matriculated either to New York or Boston, and they're right. all out of college. So I feel pretty normal, and I feel like a lot of my experiences are – are really kind of common everyday 22 year old experiences like I mean it's a good point you're kind of yeah. figuring out your career just as they're figuring out their career yeah you know I, I mean? think I think in a lot of ways it's super similar like honestly obviously my my job is really a regular I travel a lot obviously living in a tour bus for three months is like pretty obscure compared to going to the same job like every day and stuff but um I don't know like I, I always say when people ask me that I'm like I'm still trying to figure out how to s install like a router yeah. and like pay for wi-fi and cable yeah. and like i'm so confused about when my con ed bill comes because it feels really inconsistent <laughs> like yeah. stuff like that like if, i don't know if, if i think a lot of the things i experience are super normal 22 year old thing yeah i heard you tell in some radio station that's kind of one of the biggest um challenges of your newfound success is kind of moving out moving out on your own being independent maybe before you thought you would that honestly i think like that's the hardest thing is I became independent from my parents, both kind of physically and, and financially so much earlier than most people my age. So I think that's kind of been the most difficult thing because I'm so close with my parents and for them to kind of have to loosen their parenting role earlier than anticipated, I think has been really difficult for both them and me. Yeah, but in some ways, I'd imagine brought you closer together. 
Definitely. Right. Definitely. Yeah. It's just weird when like I I want to do something with like getting my parents' permission. Or, you know what I mean? Like, cause yeah. I I can like do I don't know. I'm out on my own in like kind of a different way I think than than most 22 year olds are who just graduated college. Like most 22 year olds I think still really utilize their parents for guidance. Not that I don't, but I definitely I think have a little bit more liberty yeah. than most people my age. Um, I loved your mom in the Sleeping with Roses documentary on YouTube. <laughs> and um, I got a kick out of her story, which she was talking about back in the day. You in school at a very young age, your teachers would just be like, dude, Chelsea's just like too smart. She's just like ahead of all the other kids. Like, oh. what, are your, what are your memories of school? Were you, were you bored at times in school? Because did you feel like, you, you know, your mind was moving a bit faster than others? I think definitely up to a point. Like in, when I was in like public school, definitely. Like I was, but not like when I got to, I mean, I went to boarding school and like, I definitely did super well there. Um, but you I play sports at boarding school. Yeah. What boarding school did you go to? Pomfret school. Super okay. small. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but I went to Amherst college and played soccer there. And if any of you guys know Amherst, it's like a really smart person school. And I was like by far one of the dumbest people there, <laughs> <laughs> like a typical, typical recruited athlete. Um, somehow like did well academically, but um, I don't know. In the grand scheme of life, I definitely am like not the smartest. Like I grew up in New Jersey, and I remember Amherst College being like where like the smartest wide receiver would go. You know what I mean? Like the, like the smartest like middle of the pack athlete. Yes, like, exactly. D three. Yeah. Nothing special. The linebacker <laughs> that took AP classes went to Amherst. College. Yeah, that was exactly. me. That was yeah. me. <laughs> Soccer player took a lot of APs, went to Amherst, and then kind of spiraled and dropped out. <laughs> right on. I want to um. You, there's a couple of uh really big pivotal decisions you've made over the past couple of years in your life and in your career. I'd, I'd love for you to kind of break down because I think I have to imagine there's a lot of young fans watching and even young artists watching that are going through the same decision making that you've had to do. And the first one is uh, deciding to leave school and kind of go full, full blown into music. How did you make that decision? Who did you consult with? Like, what did it come down to? Honestly, it really was my parents. They'll deny this till the day they die, but it was them who they sat me down like right before I went back to preseason my junior year and they were just like we know music makes you really happy we hate seeing you upset about going back to college because I obviously did not want to like sit in classes I was so ADD and just like wanted to make music all the time <laughs> I would like sit in class and literally draw out like the treble clef and like write melodies <laughs> like I was so bored in class not that I'm like not grateful for my education but um, yeah, so they sat me down. So I went back, I played my junior, uh, my junior fall, my season, and, um, and I got the offer to go on the Quinn 92 tour. And finally, we had like a tangible reason to say, hey, like, it makes sense for you to leave school because there's something you can go do. It wouldn't be just me sitting at home trying to make music. Um, it was like, our goal was kind of like, let's stay in school as long as I possibly can until something is literally too good to pass up. So, yeah. Gotcha. So what would you be your advice? Is it like, like, how do you know when? I guess that is, you said it right there, like when the, when the work is too good to pass up. Yeah. Like going on a nationwide tour with an artist who was moving a lot of tickets and the music overlap was like really strong. So yeah. it obviously was a really good fit. That just felt like way too good to pass up. Totally. You know, but I would definitely, I think a lot of people come to me and they're like, oh, I'm so inspired by you. Like, I, I want to leave school and do music. And I'm like, no, don't do that. Stay. Definitely yeah. stay in school and, like, try to graduate. Because if I could have graduated, I mean, I was only a year and a half away from graduating. So. And you can always go back. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I'd love to go back. But um, I don't know. I think just stay in school as long as you can because education is really important. Absolutely. And then the other uh, big decision you've had to make is you were previously an independent artist. Now you're with Republic Records. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you know it was time to partner up and sign with a major label? Basically, I, th I think we kind of reached our capacity for what we were able to accomplish independently. Um, I mean, we were like distributing everything ourselves. We were trying to do all the marketing ourselves. Uh, we even did my first tour without a booking agency. So it just got to the point where we were like, 
if we really want to break through the ceiling and get to the next level, we need a whole team behind us and we need the expertise of a label to do that. Right on. Yeah. Do you have any advice for like, you know, uh, if you're talking to, if you're an independent artist watching and you're talking to multiple labels, like how do you know which one to go to? Like what, any advice on the label signing process? Yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of it for me was just personal fit because I'm like a really emotive person. So um, I wanted to feel really at home and feel like the team was passionate about my vision. And, and I wanted to know that they supported me and what I wanted to do. And, and um yeah, I don't know. Republic and I are really like-minded, like very competitive, very, um, you know, willing to adapt and pivot. Um, and I, I don't know. For me, it was a no-brainer. It was a really good fit. And um, I think label deals also come down to how much, like, I think we're at a really, it's a really great time to be an artist right now because we have a lot of leverage in our ability to negotiate. So I think, you know, a label that respects like your, you know, your deal terms and what's important to you. Um, like if you, if you want to keep your masters at the end of the day, stuff like that. So, yeah. That's awesome. yeah. Um, I want to talk to you about your songwriting because you're such a prolific songwriter and you largely write everything by yourself. It's sometimes though you do bring on a co-writer and I'm curious for someone that is such a gifted songwriter, what calls for that collaboration? Is it, is it a lyric, an idea, a melody just like you need to have? Is it a, a disposition you want to tap into? Why, why collaborate at times? Sometimes it's just like out of friendship. Like if I, um, like I have a great relationship with Scott Harris. Um, so he's done like a lot of the Shawn Mendes stuff. Um, so any chance that he's home and I get to work with him, you know, it's an honor always le to learn from him. And um, I'm just honored that he like cares about the project enough to like want to be a part of it, you know? So um, sometimes it's just like that, just a relationship where I really respect them. Um, I've been dying to write with Julie Michaels, so we're trying to make that happen. Just because, like, I yeah. I, how does that I, not happen? It's how I, it'll happen. Yeah, we're gonna make it happen. It's gotta happen. Um, and then sometimes it's like I'll I'll get to a certain point with a song where I just know that I'm not the person who's gonna bring it the home stretch. Like, mm. you know, I can't do the final five or ten percent on it, and uh, that's just kind of like having the pride to be like I I I'm not the right one to take this home. That's big of you to, I mean, some artists, like, they, they won't admit that. So that's really cool that you're open to to that final 5 to 10%. I think I'm, like, the first person to admit when I... Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you're also, you know, great at producing, and I know uh, Captain Cuts helped out a bunch on the debut record. How did that work divvy up between you and Captain Cuts? So the, we just did Sad the Night together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought they did, like, the whole... They didn't do the whole project. No, I did, I did like, 40... Or, 13 out of 15 songs alone. So oh, wow. Like, yeah. Okay. I had no um, idea. Or like, it's incredible. Yeah, pretty much. With like some additional production like here and there. Right. Um, but yeah, we did we did Sad the Night together. And we just, again, they were like a group that I was stoked to get in the room with. I hadn't met them before, but a huge fan of their work. Um, I think like just collaborating with people is awesome. You learn a lot um, from kind of seeing how other people write and how they work. And we just got in the room and uh, they laid down some guitar basically um like that main sound in the drop is actually like a super distorted guitar i don't even know how they mixed it but it's sick yeah and uh and we were like yo this is just really great and i kind of sat in a corner just kind of mumbling like melodies and lyrics to myself and uh i didn't actually think it was good but i was like all right guys this is probably bad but i'm gonna sing it for you and uh we made a couple tweaks to it and that was pretty much and that the was a song how did yeah. it feel uh, performing it on television for the first time that was cool super cool yeah i was super nervous for like two days leading up to it, but I didn't tell a soul that I was nervous until after, um, which I think might be my new MO. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. before LOL, I was telling everyone, I was like, guys, this is the hardest day of my life. I'm terrified. Um, but yeah, I don't know. No, it came out great. It was really cool. It, must be, like, it was like, the, honestly, it was like the fastest two minutes of my life. And yeah, that's I what everyone says. I think I blacked out and I don't even really remember. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky we have YouTube. I know, yeah. I watched it on YouTube, and I was like, oh, yeah, that was sick. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's this Lewis Capaldi song that you have? Um, yeah, we wrote a song once in a session, and it probably will never come out. Right. Yeah. But just, like, what is it? A, like, give me, like, a teaser. Like, what is it? What was the subject matter? It was, like, a typical, like, if you put Lewis Capaldi and me in a room, it's going to be a sad yeah. singer songwriter -y <laughs> heartbreak song. Did you get to spend any time with Lewis, or was there kind of just like in and out, like you worked on the song? Uh, I mean, we had we spent like probably like six hours together. He's hysterical. Yeah, he's a character. Yeah, right? yeah, he's so awesome. Good dude. Yeah. He's cracking me up on the Grammys. He was like talking about how it's all downhill from here. He's like, <laughs> I know, I know, he's hysterical. Um, 
And then um, I wanted to talk about just the huge year before we kick it over the fans that you're about to have. Tour kicks off next month. You're yeah. also playing Terminal 5, which I have to. You're headlining Terminal 5, I really should say. That's got to be just huge for you growing up in the Northeast. Yeah. I'm sure you went to shows in Terminal 5. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Is that just surreal now, like you headlining that place? Yeah, it's unreal. And, and honestly, to be candid, I have seen so many people that I idolized sell out two nights there. So in the back of my mind, I was secretly like, please God, give us two nights at T5. And when we actually did it, I was so blown away. That's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank and you. then uh, Coachella. Yeah. That's pretty rad. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. Calm, cool, and collected over here. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, actually, before we get to the fans here in New York, we're going to kick it over to Twitter. You have fans all over the place. Cool. At Lily Stewart. Hi, Chelsea. What's your favorite song off the new album and why? Um, I love Sad Tonight. Obviously, because commercially it's doing great, so that makes me love it. Um, but NJ is definitely my favorite song off the album. It was the hardest for me to put out. I was super scared, kind of how it would be received. Um, so I don't know. I think the vulnerability on it is special. Why did that scare you so much? I think it's, like, so specific in its storytelling. So I just I knew, like, everyone in my personal life would know exactly who it was about and what it was about. Um, I'm not scared of you guys hearing it. I don't know you. Um, but <laughs> I was like, when my mom heard it, I was like, I shriveled up and died inside. <laughs> yeah. well, so that's always the most nerve wracking. I mean, millions of people are streaming this song, but it's really like, you know, the five to 10 people closest to you that you're probably most worried about. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. All right, let's get to uh, the first fan question. It's going to come from right behind me. What's your name? Uh, I'm Kaylee. How you doing? Hi, I'm good. Uh, so my question is kind of like thematically with this whole album, How to Be Human, you're talking about like your process in your career, but also just being a human. How do you how do you struggle with, you know, you've said in the past you were kind of disenchanted by the craft of songwriting and this being your career. How do you kind of get yourself back in the mindset to fall in love with music again? Definitely. Um, can I be super candid with you? Absolutely. I was so depressed. Like, I was having a really difficult time, just me and my personal life. And when, when that happens, obviously a huge symptom of that is just you stop caring about things that you care about and are passionate about. So for me, um, it, was, it was really more about getting myself, like, the help that I needed to get in a better headspace. Um, and, you know, thank gosh, I, you know, I'm feeling a lot better and I love music right now, so that's great. Um, I think I think a huge thing is just gratitude and just reminding yourself like every single moment that you get so fortunate to be doing something that you love um, and even if you don't love your job you're fortunate you know you have a job you're in New York City um, you have the the whole world in front of you and, and the, just reminding yourself how how grateful you should be for everything one day at a time yeah. one literally one second at a time yeah. like focusing on being present has saved me the past few months yeah. even if it's like a a nice breeze goes by and you're like, whoa, that feels great on my skin. Like, that's a great reason to to be alive and to feel good. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. This is a great question, by the way. Are you like a journalist or anything? No? This is really good. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm in advertising, but like music is where my heart is. So. Cool. Wow. Well, there's a lot of overlap there. I'm trying to. You'll get there. Thanks. That's awesome. Great question. Uh, second question is going to come from somewhere. There we go. Hi. Um, I'm Bailey. My nice. question That's for a sick you, name. Thank you. Yeah. Um, congrats on the release, by the way. Thank you. Um, my question for you is, how did the process change between, you know, the EPs that you've done, the mixtapes, and then when you're working on an album? I think just natural growth. Um, it's like the most cliche answer of all time, but I can't say that my writing process really differed in any way other than I think I was a lot more deliberate and careful than I've previously been. Um... It's not a good answer. It's not very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. I think I thought a lot more about things and and not not just like what what um like not just lyrically but conceptually like I processed a lot more how I was feeling and what my experiences were so that I could I don't know. So that writing for me was like more of a productive experience than just coming up with a song, but it for me helped me get from point A to point B. Um, kind of emotionally and maturity wise. Sweet, thank you. Yeah, try to spice it up for you. Is is, the, is album something that like weighs heavy on you, or is it just kind of a word? Debut weighs heavily on me. Album does not. 
Okay. Yeah. So like, I mean, like a debut EP versus a debut album would just mean the same to you or? No, I mean, obviously, I think just debut album, like in general. Yeah. It's, you know, you only get your debut album once. And um, I don't know that. Yeah, that definitely kind of gave me a lot of pressure, but. Right on. Yeah. You talked in the documentary on YouTube uh, about just really the lack of visibility of, of, of women in music and mainstream music. Growing up, did, was there like a, was there an artist that you saw yourself in or did you, was there maybe a debut album like you really internalized? Hmm. Honestly, not really because I feel like women getting into production is um, such a recent thing. So for me, there wasn't really anyone that, I grew up and I, I don't know. No, even like getting in my first sessions and stuff, it was never really women in the room. It was always, it was always dudes behind the computer. And if there were women in the room, they were writers and, and, uh, you know, all the engineers, all the producers were always guys. So, um, I think, I think the visibility is really increased now. Uh, like, I think if you were, sorry. No, sorry. No, I'm just curious, like, because, um, I think a lot of, uh, well, especially male artists, but a lot of uh, artists in general, they, they're they lucky or fortunate enough to have a North Star, you know, someone to idolize, someone to emulate, someone to sort of guide them in their vision and their artistic growth. But it seemed like you, it doesn't seem like you had that that person. So I'm just curious how that affects just growing and developing as an artist when there's not like a person to emulate. Yeah. If, honestly, the closest thing I can think to for me growing up was like Taylor Swift, because I know, she, you know, she obviously had a hand in um, writing a lot of her music and right. most of it, you know, um, I don't know for me, it just felt, it just like fueled my fire because for me, it just felt like there's such an open lane and still feels kind of open for me. Um, obviously a lot more women are getting into it, but I don't think, um, I don't know. I think in like mainstream, like center pop music, that's still like a super open lane. Yeah. So, um, well, and I mean, this is like the most I mean, the, the, the best possible way I, I can mean it, but I, I don't, like, a lot of times, um, you know, when you interview people for a living, you talk to people for a living, you can kind of see, like, a new artist, like, oh, they're kind of doing that thing. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. they're kind of doing the that guy thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know another Chelsea Cutler. I can't really put you in a box, which I think is, like, a great thing. And I an love that. That's thing. the best comment. But, like, I don't think there's been, like, a Chelsea Cutler type before, you know, type artist, I should say, before that's kind of doing it all and doing it very specifically and authentically. I think, I think, um... For men, there's a ton, but for women, yeah, not really. And I think, um, I think in the, in kind of the future pop type stuff, there's definitely women coming up in that. Um, I, again, maybe it's a conceited thing to say. I don't know. It fuels my fire, but I don't. I don't think there really is another woman who's producing their whole albums like in in kind of more mainstream pop. So, yeah, yeah. And sounding like you. You know what I mean? I think that's like the greatest victory of all. Yeah, I don't, no you either how love my voice or you hate it. So. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Deal with it, people. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I hate it too, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to one final question from someone I, I, I assure you does not hate your voice. Uh, it's going to come from over here. What's your name? Hi, I'm Colleen. Um, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. <laughs> um, so I'm a songwriter myself, and you've like really inspired me to learn more about music production. So I was just curious how you like got your start in learning how to produce music. For sure. Um, I went to boarding school again, and we had like a three-sport policy. You had to play three sports, a se so like a sport every single season. And I was playing, like I was playing on a national league for soccer, so I was commuting like almost two hours back and forth every night for uh, club practice. So I absolutely didn't want to play like an additional sport. So I got the school to let me like do an independent project, right? So basically we had this tiny recording studio and the music teacher showed me basically how to press record on Logic, how to plug in a mic into a preamp and that was kind of it. And uh, I just spent a whole semester recording um, and teaching myself how to do that and kind of fumbling awkwardly through that. And uh, just the more, I'm fortunate, you know, I obviously got picked up by management and, and labels and I was able to get in the room with producers and just watching them, you know, literally just watching people and asking questions and uh, asking like, what plugin did you use to do that? How did you EQ that? And just taking notes and taking that home with me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. Really great questions. Yeah. Chelsea Cutler fans. Wicked smart. Um, all right, we're unfortunately out of time. Uh, Want to remind you right now, of course, How to Be Human is available everywhere. You can stream that. You're already streaming it by the numbers alone. Uh, Saturday night is off that. You can stream that as well. And then the tour, uh, are tickets available for the tour? 
Not in New York. Oh, we're opening some up, I think, in New York. When yeah. do they go on sale? Know. They've been on sale. Oh, they have been on sale. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right on. But is New York sold out? New York sold out. But I think oh. we're gonna. I think we're gonna like release some tickets because we all, all right. have like holds. On well, you can. They can follow you for all that stuff. Is it just at Chelsea Cutler? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Or you guys could like fly to f- somewhere. Go to Philly. We need to sell that one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fly to Philly? You can drive to Philly. Yeah, I don't know. I know. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. One more time for Chelsea Cutler, everybody. (laughs) 